Um, just, I think, so, I think the answer to your question is yes, they are design decisions, but you, it's, you generally find that most people don't have a developer job title, so um, you're not, uh, yes, most developers are software designers to a point, but I think it's about when you're a developer having a thought about the user before uh, in every sort of decision you make as a developer, um, rather than specifically being like an architect or a designer, I think every developer has to um, kind of think about those usability and user issues. Um, though you might not specifically be doing the full design of the software architecture, it's just a, a sort of part of it, just making sure you're thinking about it in everyday decisions that you make, I think is what Jackson was trying to say. Um, right, this is quite strange doing a presentation um, over Google Hangouts. <coughs> um, but let's see how this goes. Um, hello everybody, um, good to see such an amazing turnout. Um, right, so I'm going to replace my face um, with my slides, which is probably a good thing. Um, and hopefully you'll carry on being able to hear me if anything goes wrong, because someone jump in front of the camera um, and just sort of tell me what's going on, because uh, I've got no sort of feedback from over here. Let's go. So, following on from sort of Jackson's talk and, and um, talk about usability, I'm going to carry on the theme. Um, at Carlsberg, one of the things that we, we're really, really key on, oh, sorry, Carlsberg Gould, one thing that we're really, really key on when we, when we work on a system is making sure that, that that user is put first and foremost in everything that we think about. Um, there are two other metrics that we that we focus on, and that is delivering um, measurable benefits to our clients um, and, and having everything measurable. And, and, just, and then the third is just making sure that everything that we've said we've done, we check up and test and, and make sure at the end what we, we promised and said is, is true. Um, so I'm going to carry on this theme of usability and just talk about forms and talk how hard they can generally be. It might seem like forms are a really, really simple thing, but there are some, um, I, I thought that there might be some little intricacies in sort of general usability of forms. Um, quick introduction, my name is Phil Bennett, if you don't know me. Um, I work at the same company as Jackson and went to lead there. Uh, we're an integrated marketing agency. Um, but we have a very strong in-house web team now um, who function as a production house in their own right um, and then also support um, other marketing activities for, for other of our clients. Uh, firstly, an apology. Um, this is a calendar. <laughs> it is Cliff Richards' official 19, uh, sorry, 2016 calendar. Um, calendars apparently are something that I'm completely incapable of using. Um, and I'm in fact in Berlin today. Um, I only realised about two weeks ago that I was actually in Berlin when I was promising that I'd give this talk, <laughs> which is why I'm doing it remotely. It's not a um, YouTube style, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't be there to accept my award nomination. Um, it's just generally a massive fuck up on my part in that town. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this would have been a bit better if we being in person. Um, but let's see how this goes, and hopefully the technology holds up. Um, firstly, the, the technical bit. So, to, what I wanted to do is, I had a sort of a gut feeling that forms and sort of general tools that are uh, designed and developed to help uh, developers uh, build forms quickly and easily might not actually be outputting the, the, uh, the things that we really, really needed to. Um, so, I really wanted to test the theory. Um, and really, really sort of go about testing and making sure that the, the tool sets that we, we use at Carswell and um, the other tool sets that other people use um, are really delivering the usability and the user experience that people were expecting for a form. <coughs> um, anecdotally, we just had some, you know, when we, do, when we do a project now, we try and make sure that we're doing some usability testing on every single project that we do. Um, uh, we had some, oops, uh, we had some, um, so just some anecdotal evidence of just people just really sort of struggling to use things that we just perceive to be basic, uh, simple forms. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't... I just wanted to test it and see how, and sort of test my theory on the fact that when these tools are actually making it a little bit harder for the user. Um, so what I did is I identified two back-end frameworks. Um, I chose it Laravel and Symfony. Um, yes, they do still code um, every now and again. Uh, and actually, the, the research in this, uh, for this presentation, actually, I got my hands with it. It was a nice experience to go back and start coding. Um, using the uh, built-in form builders, so no. <coughs> um, 
Uh, I identified three front end frameworks that seem to be either very popular or becoming very popular. Um, the first is Materialize, which is a CSS library that's based on um, Google's material design and then apply that to a uh, front end CSS framework. Uh, the second, I'm sure that everyone's aware of, is uh, Twitter's Bootstrap. Uh, and the third is Herb Foundation. Sorry, Herb's Foundation. I think the company is called Herb built it. And uh, Foundation, very, very similar to Bootstrap, gives you all the same sort of um, out of the box UI functionality on, on CSS things. Um, however, so I'm going to turn off all my devices with all the tweets going through distracting. Right. Um, okay. And what I did is I just got a very, very simple uh, registration form and then a combination of all of those. <coughs> So I built uh, on both of the back end frameworks, I built a form using each of the front end frameworks. So I ended up with six simple registration forms. Uh, really, really simple. Ask for a name, an email, a password, a birthday, a marketing opt out. Um, all the forms had built in validation. Um, use the form builders, as I said. Use the core CSS from all of those um, frameworks. <coughs> um, to make sure that I wasn't sort of tweaking it and, and using my own bias to, to change things. Um, and if I think if there wasn't a component that I was using, for example, some of the frameworks don't have built-in uh, date pickers, I Google for uh, materialized date picker and pick the first one that was there. Materialized does have a date picker built-in, but that's a bad example. But if there wasn't a date picker, I searched for it. Um, except I kind of cheated um, on the um, bootstrap and the foundation forms. I used the uh, HTML5 date field. Um, picker, uh, date picker, uh, which currently only seems to work in my version of Chrome. So it's kind of cheating. I'm using um, non standard um, uh, date pickers, but um, uh, just want to sort of test that as well. I'm getting a bit of feedback. Is it sounding okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and then I've got all these films that I've got, I just tested the shower with. Um, Performing a very used, a very simple user test, usability test on them, <coughs> which I'll cover in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, and I tried uh, testing with about 100 users um, and then correlated the results. Uh, so this is just a quick overview of the forms. It's just a super simple form, and you know it couldn't really get any more simple than what other than a login form potentially. Um, this is the materialized CS, the materialized one. Uh, first name, surname, email, password, um, enter your birthday. I did want to check um, address formats and, and people testing and using addresses, but um, I didn't get around to it. I didn't have enough time to, to build those forms and test those properly. Um, and then uh, a little option to tell what I would be delighted to receive your marketing crap. And then a big register button. Materialize this, this is the date picker that looks like this. This is what comes out of the box. Um, very pretty. Uh, bootstrap form using the uh, HTML5 date field. Okay. Um, if no one's aware of this, that uh, uh, one of the input types can you can add set to date. Um, some more recent versions of browsers will check will pick that up and offer you a date picker um, as the default. Um, there's also things like color as well, which allow you to pick a color picker. <coughs> um, I could only get it to work on my version of Chrome. Uh, it didn't work on my story in better way. So it's pretty non standard, and I thought I'd just try to test it. Uh, and this is the Zerb Foundation. Zerb, not Herb, I just built my slides wrong. Um, Zerb Foundation uh, form, very, as you can see, very similar style to, to uh, Bootstrap, but just sort of strips it down a bit. Again, using the h 5 date picker. And so, why? I just had a kind of hunch that these forms were. Um, not quite right. We weren't really thinking about it, just assuming that users were comfortable with these sort of um, the way that we were presenting these forms. Um, I just wanted to uh, wanted to um, how we do usability testing. Um, I can just about see you guys. Can you put your hands up if you do user testing? I can't see any hands. Can you cheer if you do usability testing? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm guessing that counts a lot for many people. Um, okay, that's cool. Um, so we used a huge, uh, a really, really high, uh, high-tech uh, user testing lab 
Um, that's just not true. What we use is we use a gorilla eating an apple, um, which we'll come to in a minute. This is our user testing suite. Um, it's just my beat up old MacBook Pro. <coughs> that's all you need to do good user testing. Um, gets you most of the way there. Uh, just using a laptop um, with a video camera in it. Um, we use a, uh, a piece of software called Silverback. Um, uh, is anybody aware of Silverback? Cheer? No? Cool. Um, so Silverback is a soft piece of software. It's super, super simple. And really all it does is it just records your user using website um, through the video camera and through um, a screen capture. You can get so much information out just using this one piece of software. Um, there is a small piece of irony, uh, or a small piece, a massive piece of irony in the Silverlight software, is that about six months ago they released version 3, um, but then withdrew it from sale about a month later because it was completely unusable. <laughs> um, <laughs> please don't let that put you off. There is still, but what that means is the, the previous version, which is a good, very simple usability testing tool, is now completely free. However, it does only work on Macs, um, and I know there's a lot of people who don't use Macs. Um, for various reasons. There are, um, I believe, equivalent software for Windows and, and Linux. Uh, but all it is is just in case it's a software, it's a piece of software that's, that, that records the screen and records the user's face and voice whilst they use it, um, while they use it for software. Um, and what you end up for now, this, uh, because this is me doing a remote uh, Google Hangout with a video. Um, so video never worked in presentation, so that hopefully this will work. So this is what you end up with. So you end up with something very, very simple. Um, and it's simply just a user network. Just a very simple video that just um, shows you the user. It highlights where they're clicking. You can see their mouse and see what they're doing. Uh, but then you also have the bottom right corner the, the user's face, um, so you can highlight and cue their, their user uh, or their user their, their facial expressions uh, and listen to them. Um, and what we do on most of our projects is we run, we try wherever possible, wherever the user has budget, wherever the client has budget, to run as many te user testing sessions throughout the project build as we can generally ends up being um, a session midway through the build and then a session very close to the end of the build. Um, so the first session kind of tests our general thinking um, and design decisions and then the one at the end is kind of figuring out for the much more usability from making everything working uh, and all of the things that we're sort of starting to finalise up. Um, that all works nicely. Um, and the process is very simple. We normally sit them down between, depending on how much the build has been built, between 20 to 40 minutes, and just ask them a series of questions. Just ask them to, um, annoyingly, Jackson stole my anecdote, uh, anecdote, which is slightly annoying, uh, a problem with people using, uh, doing a presentation of somebody who works with you. Um, this, in fact, is the lady who um, didn't use the search bar because she simply didn't, she just, at the previous site, just had a terrible search functionality. So I can't use that. Um, so when you do a user testing session, it's very, very important to make sure that your script is right and isn't biased in any way. Um, if you have a very good understanding of the organisation or a very good understanding of um, your uh, your project, um, which you should do uh, if you're building it, um, you'll have a, a, an understanding of how you really want it to work and how you want users to use it. Um, what you really have to make sure and be really key on is that, that you're not leading users into certain um, decisions and, and, and making certain assumptions. So you have to be completely neutral with the script that you write for user testing. <laughs> and I've got to entirely honest, it's something that I don't think I've quite got right yet. Um, I always feel when I'm doing the session that so there's points where I'll, I'll accidentally lead someone into a certain um, uh, route or um, give them a certain hint about something. And it, 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 it's just you kind of got to be really careful. So when 
<laughs> Thanks, Mike Rogers, for your tweet. Um, so, who, another chair, who's read these books? <laughs> One of them. Seriously? <laughs> um, if you haven't read these books, go and buy them now and read both of them. Read Don't Make Me Think first, um, and then use Rocket Surgery Made Easy, which is a kind of a, a guide on how you should learn simple usability testing. Um, and it, it, they're very, very simple and sensible books, and you kind of read them, and it's what they're books that you read through, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, I know that, but I wasn't really thinking about it. So it allows you to sort of think through um, and, and understand exactly how it is. But just, just to, uh, like to advise you just to go and read these books. Um, they are, they, they sort of, I read them about, I don't even want to admit, it's probably about 10 years ago. They kind of changed the way that I, that I work, I guess, from a development point of view and a, and a system design point of view. But what I really want to touch on is that the market to make easy. It just tells you how easy it is for the usability system, but making sure that your questions are so non-biased. So in this set of usability, I simply asked the user to register for an account and describe their experience. Um, <coughs> and what I did is I had the system, I had all the pages set up locally um, on the local web server on my computer, um, and I just basically tested it with everybody I met, um, just walking in, if you know, if I was in any sort of social situation, we'd put my laptop and annoy people and ask them to register on these forms. Um, and just record their experience, and so that way I get a big, you know, I hit family members, different age groups, different music groups, um, just to make sure I had a really good balance. Um, and now another apology. Um, in this part here should be a really amusing video um, of lots of people not being able to use websites. Um, and we'd all sit here and laugh and watch the video of these idiots not being able to use a website and then feel deep down quite bad about ourselves because we made those websites and these users can't use. Um, unfortunately, the video is on a hard drive drive in my flat in South Sea. <laughs> um, and I forgot to bring it to Berlin with me. Um, so I can't share the video, but I will share it afterwards um, when I get back to uh, Portsmouth, I'll pop it onto Vimeo or YouTube um, and I'll share that video. Um, and it will hopefully uh, kind of bring home the point. Um, so, after sort of testing these videos, these the videos, these uh, forms to death uh, with users, um, uh, I kind of so went over. Excuse me, you end up with a lot of video footage. One thing about usability testing is that you, you want to get a, a minion to uh, go through all your videos um, and make notes. Um, luckily, we've just hired my practice at Castle Court, who does an awesome job of going through all my user testing videos and picking out the highlights and lowlights of videos. It makes me a nice summarized form so I can make my own conclusions from there. Um, but it does end up taking a lot of time. So if you, do, um, if you do decide to go down the route of doing user testing, which you really should do, um, just, uh, just make sure you've got the time to, to actually properly review them afterwards. Uh, one thing that we find really beneficial at Castle Court is to sit and design the whole team down in a room and go through the videos. Um, it can be a very time costly experience. If you imagine you've got a team of five building a web project um, and you're sitting in that for four hours just to look through videos, um, it can be quite hard to get past um, the, the, you know, the people who hold the first, thing, first strings. But it's one of the most invaluable experiences that we, we have, I think, at Castle Board with that collective um, discussion going through the projects and realize, really realizing where we've made mistakes. Um, you don't really say, when you're looking at a web project, sometimes you simply don't know what you've done wrong you put it in front of the user. And you're so excited and, and pumped about the amazing cool widgets that you put in. Uh, sometimes you'll not notice some of the glaring obvious mistakes in the simple parts of your project. Um, so, what did I. Does anyone else experience issues with birthday pickers on websites? You died yeah. for about two minutes, Phil. <laughs> huh? We didn't hear any of that stuff from that slide. You went dead. Which slide? The one before the birthdays one. The one before the birthdays one. What, what did you last hear? <laughs> Why <are you> then? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know where to go back to. This is a challenge. Um, so I was talking about uh, the outcome. So after testing all these forms, 
Um, I was talking about summarising, did you catch that, about summarising the information? Yeah. So, have someone to summarise them. Um, and then I spoke about... Where was that? Nothing. <laughs> Am I, talking, I, think I'm talking to my, I think I'm talking to my echo now. <laughs> Okay, anyway, what did we learn from this massive session of user testing that, that we did? Um, so, has anyone, so, a cheer, has anyone experienced any issues with date pickers on their websites? Yes. Yeah. Um, if someone has found a really good solution to date pickers, especially birthday pickers, um, uh, uh, could you tell Jackson? <laughs> uh, and then you can pass it on to me, because as, honestly at Carson we've not found anything perfect. Um, um, our best option is the three option drop down, so date, um, month, year, uh, seems to go down the best for users, but they still don't get it. Um, one thing that we witness uh, again and again and again is that, that date pickers, especially the materialised one, are terrible. Um, users absolutely hate them. Um, the one that comes in Chrome currently for the HTML date field is almost impossible to use, um, especially for picking birthdays. Um, and people tend to, to just type weird stuff in, you just can never expect to, to, to find what people are using. Um, so if anybody, if anyone has a, a solution for that, please, please tell Jackson, hopefully you can pass it on to me. Uh, but what we do find is that, and it just sort of reiterates my thinking on that, is that those three select boxes, uh, pretty much year, seem to work the best. Um, the one thing that kind of surprised me about the user testing. It's something I kind of had a punch at before, but um, it kind of solidified what I was thinking, is that um, forms only work really when the, the validation is really brutal. Um, if the error messages that come back, the, the bigger and the bolder they are, they may end up being really, really ugly, um, but it's just super important. Uh, users completely miss them. So with materialising the bootstrap forms, um, I should have put examples in to show you, um, I forgot. Um, they just highlight the field in a certain colour um, and then put some very tall text on them. Um, and, pe and users just missed it over and over and over again. Foundation is better, it puts the, uh, by default, it puts the validation in a big block that sits underneath the, the field. Um, but it, it, it still wasn't perfect. It's just the bigger and the bolder and more brutal uh, that you put those four validation errors in uh, that the likely to find it a better experience. And you'd be so you would you'd be so surprised at how many times a user sits there staring at the screen saying, "Why, why is the, the register button not working?" They just click, repeatedly click it without even seeing those validation errors. Um, the other thing that I came um, came to the conclusion was that the material design simply doesn't work on the web yet. Um, users, most of the users that we tested, had an ex expectation to just see standard input forms. <coughs> so. Although they might be boring and they sort of stand in for forms what your users are expecting to see when they enter data. Um, uh, I don't know who, is everybody, which is just another cheer, is everybody sort of aware of what the material design is? Yeah. yeah. A kind of mumble. Um, so it's a, design, it's a design language sort of designed by Google um, to help sort of usability and, and make things uh, a lot more usable. Um, from what I can tell, uh, we had an experience of it in a mobile environment. It seems to work really well in mobile, but I just think the users aren't quite ready for it in a web environment yet. Well, definitely from the um, <coughs> uh, definitely from the, the, the testing that we did. Um, just quickly to clarify, I'm going to skip back. Um, this is the this is the materialized CSS stuff. So what happens is when you uh, you see the the name. Uh, and that's the field, that's the actual field. When you click on it, um, the name moves away, and just and the actual the label of the field moves away, and you can then type in the space where it is and it sits above it, um, which works slightly. It does fix the problem with placeholders, people don't like placeholders, um, but it, it's not quite there. People get a bit frustrated with it. The main thing is they just sit here staring at it, not feeling that it's a form, and they're not entirely sure what to do with it. Um, Um, but the, the main outcome of this was that um, actually 
Um, I, my hunch wasn't quite right. Um, the tools and the form builders and the front end frameworks that, that most people are using do actually hit the point most of the time. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a 20% effort, gets you 80% of the way there if you're using these tools. Um, they do create a, a pretty good user experience. Um, a, a fairly large, you know, acceptable set of their users were actually using these forms to find them okay to use. Um, but what I would say is they were, they were edge cases quite a lot of the time. Um, and each of the frameworks do have their, their little quirks that users just aren't quite comfortable with. Um, so what, you know, what I generally recommend is, <coughs> um, is user test, just make sure that you're user testing. Um, you can use these forms and methodologies and I'm not going to stop you, um, but you need to make sure that um, you are um, validating that information and validating your users and checking because you'll be very surprised about what those users are, what those users are experiencing that you're not really thinking about. And user testing is so easy. Um, it is simply the case of getting a few people in front of a computer and watching what they do when you use it. You don't need fancy, you don't need fancy stuff, and you don't need eye tracking uh, stuff, you don't need um, any of the weird sort of user testing lab stuff. It, 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 again, it's sort of an 80-20, you do 20% of it and you get 80% of the result. Those, those, you know, those cool user testing labs are great and I've had experience working in uh, ones at Noise Bank in London, uh, but it doesn't really get me much more um, than you get out of just using um, a free piece of software as a laptop. Um, so you have no excuses not to be user testing. Thank you, and any questions? I might not be able to hear the questions, if anyone's got questions. Does anyone have any questions?